imagine with me, if you would, a classroom. And the kids have been working on their uh, lessons for today. And all of a sudden, the teacher tells all the kids, hey, put your books away. I got something fun that we're going to do. And so the teacher immediately begins to walk around the room and she hands out papers that are all the, exactly the same that has a picture to color. Maybe something similar to this right here or something close to it. And she tells all the kids to pull out their crayons or their magic markers or, or whatever they may have in their classroom. And she says, hey, I just want y'all to take a little bit of time and, and color your picture. And so the kids, they all get out their crayons and their magic markers and they go to work. And as you can well imagine, you know, every child is different. And so some are gonna pick colors that are, uh, are one color to, to color one thing and another color to color another. And then some are gonna color outside the lines and some are gonna be very careful to stay inside the lines. and. Some are just going to do the whole background and everything there is, and some are just going to color exactly what it says to color, and some are going to get done real fast because they don't maybe care and they're not as meticulous, and others, it's going to seem like it's going to take forever because they want it to be just perfect. And that's normal, and that's natural. And we're all different, and every child is going to tackle that in a very different way, particularly when they're just given the freedom to do it and color it however they want to. So finally they're all done and the teacher tells everybody to go take their picture and to go take some tape and tape it to a wall, maybe on the bulletin board up front. And so they're all excited, they go take their pictures and they tape them up there. And then the teacher says, now we're gonna have a contest. We're gonna judge which is the best picture and the best picture is gonna win a prize. Well, all of a sudden, the atmosphere in the room changes. What started out as just a fun project, a fun game, fun task for a bunch of kids, has all of a sudden turned into a, a, a competition, something they're gonna be evaluated on. And the problem is, is every one of them's different. Every drawing, every coloring is totally different. There's not one of them the same. And what began as a fun project has now become extremely stressful and can actually become painful for some. What are they going to be judged on? Did they stay inside the lines? Did they go outside the lines? Did they color with the right skin tones or the right colors of the sky? Is the sun the right color or the stars the right color? Or were they somebody that was creative that decided they just wanted to do something different? What are they going to be judged by? And there's a lot of anxiety. And again, what started out as just a fun, simple, enjoyable task has all of a sudden now become something that's very stressful, creating a lot of anxiety, even maybe fear and hurt and pain for some of the kids, depending on how theirs is judged. You know, in life, that's the way it is for us. Uh, we grow up and as small children, we're just going about life and up until a certain age, just living it to just pure enjoyment. Then all of a sudden we hit a certain age and it seems like everything we say and do is being evaluated and judged and uh, it's becoming a competition. And some of that's okay and some of that can be good, but what separates good judgment and good competition from bad is when you know what the expectations are. If you go back to my little story of the classroom and the teacher, had the teacher begun this whole exercise by saying, okay, when we're done, we're going to have a contest and we're going to judge the best picture. And it's going to be based upon this criteria. Maybe who stays within the lines the best, who uses the colors that are the most representative of the natural colors. It doesn't matter. The difference is, is that you know what's coming at you and you know what's expected of you and you know what you need to do. In life, the thing that we have going for us as human beings is we know how we're to be judged and we know who is going to be doing the judging of us. 
I want to read just a little short scripture for you for a minute. And I'm actually using my laptop today because there's a, a wonderful program. It's also an app called Bible Gateway that I love to use a lot. And uh, if you don't have it, I encourage you to check it out. But this comes from Romans chapter 14, verses 12 through 13. And the writer says this, So then each one of us will give account of himself to God. Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather determine this, not to put an obstacle or a stumbling block in a brother's way. We're clearly taught by the teachings of Jesus and the writings of the writer here in Roman and other places throughout Scripture that judgment is coming. There's no question about that. And we don't have to wonder what the expectations are going to be of us. It's really quite simple. We're not going to be judged upon everything we do right or do wrong. Um, there's forgiveness for that. God calls us and allows us to experience His forgiveness and His grace and His mercy while we're here on earth. But what we're going to be judged upon is whether we accepted His Son, Jesus, whether we believed upon Him as our Lord and our Savior, and realize that when we do make mistakes, when we maybe color outside the lines if we weren't supposed to, or color inside the lines when we weren't supposed to, it doesn't matter. What matters is only simply this. God just says, I want you to believe in my son, Jesus. Let me take care of judging everything else. Let me take care of everything else that matters in life. Stop competing against one another. Stop judging yourself against one another. Realize I love you just for who you are, just the way I created you, just the way that I've made you. I love you just for who you are. Don't let anybody else's expectations beyond mine bring pain and hurt into your life. Trust in me, believe in me, and believe in my son Jesus. And so that you can have the faith and live a life as Jesus told his disciples. He says, look at the children. He says, unless you become like one of these, you'll not inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, he wants us to put the burdens of worldly expectations, worldly judgment, and worldly competition behind us. He wants to simp us to simply trust Him and to believe in His Son, Jesus, and realize that is all that ever matters and that you'll ever be judged by as far as the one who literally created the universe cares.
used to sit by me and be the comfort that I need. I can see a river in front of the mountain. I can hear the trees whisper as the birds are shouting. And still you hold my heavy heart as creation sings how great thou art. Still you choose to sit by me and be the comfort that Thank you, Macy, for sharing that song, and let's just close in prayer. Heavenly Father, again, I thank you that um, your word and your truth reminds us and teaches us that really the only thing in life that we need to be worried about being judged by is our, simply our faith in Jesus, believing that he died for us, and that you raised him from the dead so that he could indeed be our Savior. So, Lord, help us to be mindful not to judge others. That's not our job. To not put undue pressures on our brothers and our sisters, but to simply trust you to leave all of that into your hands and to realize we ourselves are simply going to be judged according to whether we had faith in you, in your son Jesus. Father, I pray all these things in your holy name. Amen. God bless everybody.